Walk in, ask questions, get out. Walk in, ask questions, get out. Walk in, ask questions, get out. Get out. Mr. Connor. Jesus. Remember to speak clearly and precisely to the subject. This one can be very difficult to talk to. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Ferdinand? Well, I beg your pardon. I didn't smell you in here. Quite unusual of me, I have to say. I must be coming down with the flu. Well, do take a seat. I'll fetch us some tea. All right, cool. I was just speaking to the Duke of the Highlands about a wonderful new... Or was it the Duchess? Their resemblance is uncanny. I trust you don't speak a word of this to either of them on your way out. Her demeanor is as hairy as her upper lip. Apparently, the Duke's uncle passed away in a terrible swan attack. Tragic, really. He was relentless at badminton. I say, do you partake in the thwacking of the shuttlecock yourself? Actually, I'm just here to ask you some questions. Ah. Well, of course you are. Why else would you be here? Exactly, so a question It's all any of you fleshy humunculi do these days, eh? Popping into my bloody room and asking me bloody questions. Not to have tea or play an honest game of badminton. No, 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 we're all above that. We're all too busy for badminton. What the fuck is badminton? <laughs> 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 Although, I cannot blame you for wanting to avoid this room. Not a single man has walked into my cell without losing his head, did you know that? Uh, well, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Oh, I say, you're not an average chap like the rest of them, are you? Not technically, no. You're an abnormality, an SCP like us. You belong here with us. No, 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 no. I do not belong here with you. I am not a human atom bomb. I'm not a rapidly evolving virus. And I'm not a Shakespearean cannibal. I work for them. I've no doubt in my mind of your pathetically feeble and fragile nature, but are you allowed to leave any time you wish, hmm? Ah, <sighs> dude, you've asked like five questions and I haven't even asked one. Can I uh, just- uh, uh, just, just, just one more. Just one more. <laughs> Does that hurt? Yes! That hurts! Stop it! <laughs> 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 Going nowhere. <laughs> Stop the test. Wow, I even got in the lamp. Mr. Connor, please exit the containment cell. I'm out. I don't want to be here when these bodies start voiding their bowels. Fuck you, Mr. Ferdinand. Hey. Hey. How'd the test go? Not great, but not as bad as the black hole demon. He's still better than that guy that eats memories. Mind freaks are the worst. Wait, there's a guy who eats memories? There is? I'm gonna hit the hay a little early tonight, guys. Cool. Alright, man, no prob. Hey, we're not freaks, are we? What? Two years and again, you gumped, 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 gumped. See, uh, what 
people don't understand really about corn is that you don't just uh, grow corn. You grow with corn. Now, as a corn farmer, or as some people like to call me, uh, Shepherd of the Shuck. Nobody calls you that. Mr. Connor, Dr. Mueller needs a test dummy in the biohazard center. Oh, thank God. No, no, wait, don't leave me! Yeah, so you got a Diet Coke there. You know, that has a lot of corn syrup. <sighs> ah, yes, hello. I'm Dr. Mueller, and this is Dr. Mulligan. We're botanists from the Biohazard Center of Fungal Study. Now, due to an incident with the fly traps from Venus, the botany wing's a little short on test subjects, so uh, we do apologize for any inconvenience. It's cool. This is Dr. Powers, our on-site shrink, and your temporary psychologist. Well, what happened to my psychologist? Is he still trapped in the nightmare dimension? Um, I think you mean the night terror dimension. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Cornwall. Oh, it's it's Connor. God, don't talk to me about corn right now. Connor, sorry. Well, I'm here if you needed to talk, formally or casually, and I promise I won't be too invasive as long as you promise that you're not secretly a telepathic wizard trying to steal my body. <laughs> okay. Uh, this way, Mr. Connor. I'm uh, gonna get something to drink. Yeah, get a beer and forget that ever happened, right? Holy shit. The outcome of these tests vary among individuals, but not once have we experimented on someone with regenerative immortality. Just so you know, it's very likely that you will die at least once listening to the song. So, what is it? Ed Sheeran? We can't hear you, but I'm sure that response was well funny. And we'll be starting the music in three, two, one. It's a fine day, people open windows, they leave their houses just for a short while. They walk by the grass, and they look at the grass, they look at the sky. It's going to be a fine night tonight, it's going to be a fine day tomorrow. People open windows, they leave their houses. They walk by the grass and they look at the grass. They look at the sky. It's going to Christ, I hope this isn't permanent. That's interesting. You're doing great, Connor. Wow, that's all me? We're on some Buddhist shit right here. You'll begin to notice various types of fauna evolving from your original corpse. Uh, they'll be attracted to the music, so don't let them break the speaker. <laughs> oh. Shit, we got beats. God, stay the hell away from me. Unlucky? You won't have my babies. Okay, you can have one baby. No, 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 no! There's a containment breach. We need to shut down all the facilities. Oh, no. Stop. Listen. I'm not some tree deity or forest spirit or whatever you think I am. I'm just a guy who was also a tree who couldn't be killed. No, I mean, we got this. Are we actually doing this? Are we actually leaving? I'm getting out. So, you claim the humanoid entity invaded your mind and convinced you that you wanted to escape the facility. Is that so hard to believe? Well... Come on. There's a giant slug downstairs that transforms into your greatest sexual desire, but this is too much. Wait, it transforms? What? What? 
Has it been 30 minutes yet? Connor, you can tell me if you wanted to escape. I don't have to write it down. This facility is pretty grim and dark, and they put you through a lot of horrible tests. If you're feeling like, yo, fuck this, and fantasize about escaping, then you can tell me. I guess I'm pretty... meh about it. Well, it's a start. Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Ask him out. Mm. Ah! Get it together, Natalie! Stay impartial. You don't know what terrible things could be hiding behind those big, gorgeous eyes. What if he's a murderer? Or a cultist? Or one of the self-proclaimed war veterans from that non-existent country? Sorry I'm late. My workload is crazy right now. But you were just whispering through that door, talking about how gorgeous my eyes were, like three seconds ago. Containment breach! There are shapeshifters on the loose that look like honest, hardworking psychologists attempting to flirt with my patient, who I have absolutely no romantic feelings towards. Sorry, Connor. Looks like we're gonna have to reschedule. Guess they all got away. Can't catch all of them. So, Connor, let's talk about the root of your confidence issues. Who were the most influential people in your childhood? Tell me about the people or things you met during your very unique, confined upbringing. Patient confidentiality, it's only us. As a kid, I was transferred a lot. One time I met a guy who involuntarily jumped between alternate dimensions. He seemed nice, but conversations with him were a pain. Then there was that day I got to meet myself when I was that toaster that can only be talked about in the first person. I was a real mind f**k. When I finally met a kid my own age, he was cool, I guess. He told me that he could force any adult to take care of him, groom him, and then feed him until they died of starvation. Lucky. There was this ghost that possessed one of my corpses once. We hung out for a while until he got bored of me and possessed some cooler kid. Let's see, there was an author from Site 51 that kept bugging me about his bad novels. Then there's that one guy I'm not supposed to talk about, and a few more but I can't really remember them at the moment. Uh-huh. Actually, you know what? I did have a real friend for a while. His name was Gilbert. I was probably 11 years old at the time. Site 6-3 had a huge childcare center that I got to stay in for a while. I tried to make friends, but it was an international site, so most of the kids spoke Mandarin, alternative French, the secret script, fire tongue. You know, the usual. Soon enough, my dumbass thought all the other kids would get a kick out of my regeneration powers. They didn't like it. But somebody thought it was cool. It was one of the pet octopi from the kids' aquarium. Turns out these octopi were psychic, so it didn't matter what language I spoke. I called him Gilbert. He was bullied a lot by his siblings because he couldn't change his colors. They snuck up on him and kept eating his food during feeding time. Gilbert always used to tell me that he wished he had my regeneration powers because of how useful that must be to fight against the winged menace. I don't know what he meant by that, but it made me feel pretty important. So I always made sure to keep him well fed whenever his brothers and sisters would go to sleep. He also told me that one day, he and his family would finally travel back to the ocean. Somehow. He said it was beautiful, and promised that one day I would see it too. On one occasion, I was given permission to visit Gilbert's main tank in the aquatic center. They took him and all the other octopi there for most of the week. I was pretty excited to see Gilbert's mother. Octopus don't use names, so he just referred to her as the Big Gilbert. <laughs> was the Big Gilbert as sweet as the Little Gilbert? Connor? Maybe it was psychic energy or childish fear, but I ran out of that room as fast as I could. Somehow I knew the mother didn't want me near her or her children, so I never came back. I guess Gilbert wasn't allowed to visit the child care center either. They just put stupid mermaids in the aquarium instead. It wasn't the same. Anyway, I'm sure he's fine. 
I always used to tell Gilbert that he should ditch his family the second he got out. Of the nine octopus that escaped Site 63 that year, eight washed up on the shores of Greece after an awkward battle with an army of crows. I have a photo up in my room that the Aquatic Center sent me. And Gilbert was right. The ocean is beautiful. Even with the dead giant octopus in the middle. But it makes me happier knowing that he's out there, living life, getting mad octopusy. Interesting. So, if he's still out there, does this mean he lived past the average octopus lifespan? Um, I... I don't know. Do they live long? Oh, dude! They live forever! Oh, thank God. This is the most I've ever shared with a therapist. You're so good at being not overbearing and unpleasant, Miss Powers. Oh, gosh. Please. Call me Natalie. Well, you may continue to call me by my first name. I thought Connor was your surname. It's... Interchangeable. Oh my gosh. I feel like I can tell you anything. I, I wish we could just keep talking after this session. I don't care what about. I just really like you to talk with. Maybe we can go on a date sometime. We can talk about whatever we want on a date and awkward pauses are normal because we're eating. Date? Does that mean we get to hold hands? <laughs> <laughs> It appears I am free from the Night Terror Dimension. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Natalie. The sheer amount of sexual tension from you untouched virgins shattered the boundaries of reality and now I can walk amongst the living yet again. Yes! By the way, session's next Thursday, Connor. Remember to bring your dream journal. steps west of the great barnyard. <sighs> you yes, you've done it! My favorite clipboard! He found you, girl! He found you! Sorry about all the trouble, Connor. 
Assets upstairs told me that sending a task force into 093 to retrieve a lowly doctor's clipboard was a waste of time and resources. Fucking bureaucrats. What do they know about hard work? Say, can I get a drink? Alcohol at three in the afternoon? What do I look like to you? Some stuck-up bureaucratic asswipe sipping champagne from my ivory tower? It was just a clipboard, man. Get off your fucking high horse. I was thinking more like water. Oh. Well, I only have champagne, but you can't have any. You've got another test in ten minutes. Seriously? I thought this was the last one for today. You have to see a Mr. Pierce at the Robotics Center. Sorry, kid, I don't make the rules. Fucking bureaucrats do. Better get a move on. It appears the escaped child SCP, known for her insatiable appetite for porcelain trinkets, has just been apprehended after using a teapot to murder Patterson Walber, the owner of the third floor 99 cent store. Yes, this is the first documented case of a dick dag paddywhack. Oh, for God's sake. Ah, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm Mr. Pierce from the Department of Internal Negotiations Guild and Unanimous Settlements, or Dingus for short. Follow me, Mr. Connor. There's not a moment to waste. Hey, fellas, I'm back. This is Mr. Connor, the gentleman with regenerative immortality. He's the one that turned into a log during that double breach last week. No way. Dude, no way. Yeah, way. Cotter, what do you know about the Anderson Robotics Company? They're probably blacklisted from the internet cafe, so not much. Well, it's a very secretive organization that builds machines with anomalous and unusual properties. They have support from very powerful people in laboratories all over the US, China, and that uh, country next to Sweden. Dude, no way. Well, that's the one. There's a fella in there from the company that refuses to speak with us unless we have an immortal being present. Weird, I know. My guess is that he wants to bargain in one way or another. That's why I'm here. So whatever you do, don't say a word. Open the door, fellas. How are you feeling today, 1360? I am well. I presume you wish to discuss the bargain. If you feel like it. Confirmed. I desire to obtain the likeness and abilities of this individual, Mr. Connor. A perfect organism with remarkable durability and physique. Well, thank you. Personally, I'd make improvements to hygiene standards, but that's just me. In return, I can give you six terabytes of priceless information from the Anderson Robotics Company, including their schematics, partnerships, and future plans. I see. Now, hypothetically, if you were to essentially become a Cotter 2.0, there's a bit of robot slag for you, you would still be classified as SCP and kept here against your will. Do you understand that? Absolutely. I am counting on it. I simply wish to experience the sensation of life without the burden of death. In the laboratories, I am reduced to a sliver of meaningless tasks and trials, haunted with sudden and daily intervals of endless darkness. Okie dokie. Cotter, what are your thoughts? I, um, I wasn't paying attention. Nice. Okay, 1360, that's a mighty fine offer, but I do see one or two problems with it. Elaborate. We have no idea how to extract Cotter's anomalous ability from his body to put into a surrogate body for you. We can, however, give you a normal human surrogate. We've got loads of corpses here. It's true. I think you misunderstand. I desire to be able to inhabit Connor's current body and have complete access to his brain and nervous system while his consciousness remains suppressed. Excuse me? Well, now you see, that complicates things a bit. How so? How so? Connor is valuable to the Foundation. That's right! Damn. Besides, we happen to know that when an Anderson Robotics product is sold, it has its memory completely wiped. Thought you could outsmart the biggest dingus in the room? So what top secret information could you possibly have given us anyhow? Are you insisting that I am dishonest? No, just he is. I anticipated the memory wipe, which is why I saved it on an external drive. Perhaps this will change your mind. Sorry buddy, I'm not for sale. Connor, Connor, let me do the talking. I'll take a look at this to make sure it's legitimate. Mr. Pierce, you're considering this? Now, now, Connor, I'm just taking a gander. Won't be two seconds.
The difference between you and I, Connor, is that I was able to escape my captors. You should be grateful for this offer. Yeah, no, no, not really. You're never going to leave this laboratory, Connor. I am offering the only escape you could ever hope to achieve. Do no way. Bad touch. Stop. Bad touch. Stop moving. I don't understand. Mr. Connor. Unit zero, three, one. The prodigal son. Mr. Anderson. This is not where you belong. You cannot hide from us here, or there, or anywhere. I will give you one last chance to surrender and return to the laboratory. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Dear Connor, Ever since the Foundation uploaded me into a personal computer, I've finally had the opportunity to explore the memories Anderson suppressed. My name in life was Ian, and I suppose still is. I can now convert some of my human memories into audio files to listen to, and each one generates even more memories. I would again like to apologize for trying to kill you that one time. Yours truly, Ian. Dear Ian, that name suits you. I'm glad you're discovering more about yourself than before. Maybe one day they can find out who you were and slide you back into your old life. Unless it sucked, then you can just chill here with it. And about the whole murdering thing, it's cool. It happens a lot. Being in prison does suck, but you certainly get to meet some interesting people here. Yours truly, Connor. It's interesting spelt with an E or an A. Dude, no way. You put the load right on, you put the load right on me. And I don't know who that was or why I have that dream so often. <coughs> Whoa. Yeah. I remember one dream I had where Bigfoot could talk and and his entire species used to rule over us and now they want to take over the world again. That's dumb. Is 420J not the fattest blunt you've ever smoked? That this is the only blunt I have ever smoked and all my past lives are feeling it. You know, I heard a guy inhaled one of these so hard he swallowed the joint and temporarily jumped into another dimension. What's the matter, Connor? I thought that'd make you laugh. Do you know what that means? My dream. That's a little too Freudian for my taste, Connor. Well, I'm not a Freud of anything. Oof, oh, wow. That one hurt. The boy is you and the priest is the foundation. There, boom. Too obvious. You've been here since you were three, right? I mean, what else did you ever have to worry about other than being hacked, slashed, and drawn in quarters for 19 years? 
I don't know, the day the Foundation told me that I had a mom? That kind of bummed me out for a while. Then I got over it when I started masturbating. Ooh. Those two things aren't connected. Mr. Connor, report to General Marcus in Psychwing Sector 5 immediately. Oh my god, he's going to kill me. Probably twice if I'm late. Bye, Nat. Love you. You're late, Connor. Sorry, sir. What's the matter with your eyes, boy? I was up all night reading, sir. Reading what? Words, sir. At ease, soldier. Now I'm about to brief you on your mission. If you choose to accept it, not that it matters, since you have no choice. You really like making that joke, sir. The next 24 hours of your life will be unforgiving. It will involve traveling across national borders and making contact with a previously unknown hostile entity. And furthermore, you are one quarter Eskimo on your mother's side, correct? I don't know. Well, according to the DNA swab you took four weeks ago, you share ancestry with the Eskimo people of Nunavik, Canada. This is crucial to the mission. Oh, well, I guess so, sir. But I think they prefer being called Inuits, not Eskimos. Oh, you're only a quarter, get over it. We head out in ten minutes. Must be a great view out there, sir. Oh, it is, Mr. Connor. That mountain looked like a breast, doesn't it, Lieutenant? Sure does. It's to protect normalcy, soldier. What if the van crashes and people see your regenerative ability? They already believe in ghosts, aliens, and resurrecting Jews, sir. We can't hide them all, Connor. We can't hide them all. Wow. Yeah, I know, it's pretty miserable. Dr. Marlowe's in there. Oh, and uh, he's currently possessed by a ventriloquist dummy. It's a little jarring, but Marlowe's the best marine biologist in North America, so we can't afford to fire or kill him. Good luck, soldier. Hey, is this the right place? Whoa, hey there, guy. I'm Dr. Marlowe, and this is my lab assistant, Dinkleman. Hey. You must be the test dummy from the States. Oh, sorry, mind my wording. Look at me calling you the dummy, right? <laughs> I know this is a little odd to look at, a little unusual. There's some water on the floor, the bookshelves unorganized, there's a human arm up my rectum, but trust me, we are professionals and this is a serious research facility. Come this way, friend. This is SCP-1836. It's an iceberg accompanied by several previously extinct species of hostile aquatic predators supernaturally piloted by a female of Inuit descent. She seems to really enjoy sinking vessels and feeding their occupants to her porpoise friends. The only people who ever survive these attacks are sailors and fishermen of Inuit descent, like yourself. We're going to need you to make proper contact with her. Sing her a song. She might get Inuit. <laughs> Excuse me? But you are Inuk, like me. A, a quarter, yeah, but I don't speak it. Are you a spirit? Psh, I don't know. I was sent here to ask questions, like, what's the deal with the ethnic cleansing? It's not ethnic cleansing. They do not ask for permission to hunt. Now I ask. Oh, uh, okay. What are you doing here? Oh boy. Well, there's this foundation of people who like to capture and learn about things that fall out of the norm, and- And you're one of them? God, you're worse than Ferdinand. Yes, but I also work with them. You are submitting to their demands, 
like a sled dog? I prefer the term lab rat. Wait, no, no, I don't. It doesn't matter. Point is, I have no choice. This is all I can do. The sooner you can answer my questions, the sooner I can leave you alone to look for your fingers. Okay, I forgot the questions. Uh, what are you doing here? That's a good one. I was escaping from my father. He wanted me to marry a man named Aguta. This man looked just like you. Very handsome. Bit weird, but thanks. But I did not want to marry. I did not want to do many things, my father said. My father discovered that Aguta was an evil spirit. We rowed away to escape him, but I fell into the ocean. When I clung to the side of the boat, my father cut my fingers off. Ouch. Guess he really hated spirits. I mean, he must have known you'd become this iceberg whale goddess, right? The last thing he would do was give me my freedom. It was my will that kept me alive all of these years. My parents were underprotective of me. And by that I mean they weren't there. The foundation told me that my mother abandoned me in an empty parking lot. No note, or whatever. Just left me there in the back seat of an old car, roasting away. Some poor old lady found a car full of dead babies one afternoon, and that's when the foundation got me. From what I've learned about my cellmates and feel-good lifetime dramas, the ultimate goal of a parent is to keep their child safe and happy, even if they're dicks about it. Um... Could you comb my hair? <sighs> you gotta comb? Yeah, his funeral was okay. Not the best one I've been to this month. No, he's the guy that confused 173 for 096. How the fuck do you have a signal up here, Philip? Look, something's coming. Just a bird. Not even a cool one like an ostrich. Well, I've got nothing better to do. Don't waste your ammo, Lieutenant. Careful, Gary. It might have a sharp beak. Come on. Get. Get. Connor. That sounds like a woman's name. Ow! Aitak, Sana? Hmm. You almost pronounced it correctly. I have never met another orphan before. Kanipit sana, takuna kana kani. Akavani. Sana. I want to be alone. I'm not your wife anymore. I did not come here for that. We have left you alone for thousands of years. You will be dead soon. You cannot deny that. And when that hour comes, your father has asked me to take you to him in the afterlife. So he could control me there too? So he could tell you how proud he is of you. He cut off my fingers. Yeah, well, dads be like that. He knew that you had a will strong enough to defy death itself, unlike him. He needs you. You don't have to answer his call, but... Take me to him. Lee.
are occupying boxes of a concrete But the world continues to spin A peak of endless vibrant colors from the outside Here's the community that constructed a wall, sir. I know a damn wall when I see one, Lieutenant. Go get the site manager on the phone. Yes, sir. And you don't have to yell. How many did we lose in there, Sergeant? Staff count. Six killed, 22 injured, and nine missing. Presumed hostages, sir. Hostages. I was afraid you'd say that. This drops Trojan horse with a nuke down to plan B. This is Marcus. We're going to need a less catastrophic strategy. The men here are getting un- <laughs> Eat my taint! Bureaucracy is dead and we killed it! Now the people have control! Dr. Wilson, get the f down here! Okay. Looks like you're gonna have to take out a loan. Roll for initiative. Hey, Connor, how's my pizza restaurant going? Sorry. Wait, what time is it? About 20 past 3. Shit! Gotta go, guys. Ruby's the GM for now. <laughs> Hey, dude, partner. How's it been? Torture. How about you, girl, buddy? Trauma counseling for cockroach people again. Oh, but good news. I've been doing research on the contents of your dreams, and I think I'm coming close to what might be the source of your anomalous power. Isn't that exciting? Oh, cool. Connor, don't make me use my psychology powers to make you tell the truth. I'd just rather focus on the now, you know? For now, let's just pretend I'm normal. Aw, babe, there's absolutely nothing special about you. <sighs> Thank you. Ghost swords, demon swords, sentient swords. Ah, here it is. SCP-2200. The blade that takes souls. Well, that doesn't sound fun. There's nothing fun about toppling regimes, Connor. Not anymore. You'll be fine. Miss Hilda, I don't think this plan In is- In short, this SCP is a sentient sword that chooses a host. At the moment, the designated wielder is a 27-year-old man named Lou Francis Patterson. Good lord. Don't let that face intimidate you. The sword is bound to his mind, and when he kills an individual with it, he sends their soul to a town in the Midwest called Salzburg. Or, as they now like to call it, the autocratic state of Salzburg. Go deep in the ASS and pull out the staff. Got it. Gross. Any more questions? How do I respawn after the mission because I don't want to be stuck looking like an Academy Award? Once you walk 50 kilometers away from the center of the slum, your soul will leave your body. And I'll be back to normal. Most likely. We don't know how powerful this entity is, so there's a small chance your soul will... Who knows? I'll have to read some astral documents and find the arcane weapon documents and the binder of the relic documents. God damn, we love documents in here. Hello, Connor. I bet you're wondering how I know your name. Oh, I was just going to assume she told you. You are mistaken. The sword told me. Still not impressed? The sword also told me about your plan to destabilize my eternal kingdom, my paradise, my destiny. I cannot let this happen. 
Okay, you're bragging about being all-knowing from the inside of a prison cell. You know that, right? While you pondered and studied a means of escape, I studied the blade. What? No, 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 no. Nobody's trying to escape here. Hey, mission failed. Can we go now? A dangerously short temper is a common trait among all previous sword wielders. Use that to your advantage. Ah. If you don't, then I'll have the site manager confiscate your weed. Well, looks like we're gonna be here for a long time. It would seem that way. Or at least for me, since I'm immortal, you know? Yep. But not like your off-brand slumdog purgatory bullshit. I mean like, real immortality. I know what you're trying to do. It isn't going to work. Yeah, I know you know. Your magic barbecue scraper told you so. So what? It cares enough to retroactively pass on my insults, but not enough to save your disco ball looking ass from getting locked up? You're in here too. I was taken here as a kid. What's your excuse? I know what it is. You probably is got caught day one Stop after it. stepping into the You're sunlight, to me. fucking enough. toaster asshole. I said enough. No. I won't do it. Just as well. If it's your paradise, it's probably just anime girls. Loyal subject, you have struggled and toiled in the field for generations. You have suffered great hardships and fought harsh battles. But above all, you have suppressed your fear of what is to come after death. Fear not, for you have been given an opportunity to abolish that fear entirely. What? 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 I said we had a new resident, Lord Sylvester. Ah, yes. Thank you, Sylvia. Welcome, new alloy, <laughs> to the autocratic state of Soulsburg. Okay. He's dead? What just happened? The sword told me that this was going to happen. As you wish. Alright, one more game. Bring it. Shit. What is its name? What? The name of the demon that possesses you. Do not lie. Trust me, I'd tell you if I could. But I have absolutely no idea. So is this like your house or something? I was forged by the very being that orchestrated the stars and filled the seas. I was imbued with a vow to save mankind from the scourge that is Hades and its foul occupants. If a demon is not in possession of your soul, then your very soul must be a creature of the devil himself. Now is this really necessary because I know a really cute psychic katana I could introduce you? No, no. I hope y'all learned a valuable life-changing lesson from that there message from the heart. Connor, I'm going to be straight with you. That was f***ed up. I've sent the report to the site manager, but he wrote it off as a minor workplace accident. And Connor, I've looked at your documents, and it seems almost all of your tests end in an unusual number of staff casualties, even SCP casualties. 
I was told the whole point of using you in test is because you're expandable. No offense. None taken. Maybe people dying on a regular basis is just part of the job. But I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a depressing thought. Are you new here? Yes, actually. Not to jerk myself off, but of all the SCPs to be stuck in a room with, I'm pretty damn tame and boring. I don't think you need to worry about a thing. Day 72. Another sleepless night fades in this static purgatory, haunted by the presence of a faceless, bloodthirsty army. Rations are dwindling. Meanwhile, the unrelenting barbarian tribes from the checkout regions are showing no signs of surrender. I feel crushingly smaller each day looking into the ceaseless horizon of cubicles, mourning for the souls lost in this endless hellscape. My mind is at ease, however, for I have proven myself invaluable to my tribe. I will fight for the ones I love. For her. Because I know that is what makes me a hero. But above all else, I am burdened with the knowledge that there is nothing in this world more dangerous and destructive than the monsters in this endless Swedish night. Oof, that's a splinter. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. He's alive! Quick, get the man something to drink! Is he from the outside? I hope he's okay. Broken boy, what do they call you? I, uh... This question should be really easy. Might have something to do with that awful spike in your noggin. Are you guys, like, road warriors? Can you tell me what's going on? I can't remember anything that's happened, and I'm kind of pissed off that I remember Mad Max more than my own- What are you doing? We're supposed to be looking for vending machines, not more mouths to feed. We're hunter-gatherers. What's the point of hunting if we can't even fight off the bigger tribes? If we patch this guy up, maybe he'll help us out. The point is, we can't keep getting distracted every time we see another lost smock trapped in the aisles. 
It's better distraction than your stupid journal. Hey, documenting is crucial. It's how we remember society. Have you already forgotten what convicts look like? Because this guy hasn't even ditched his prison guards. Oh, come on. Like we're all saints in the land beyond the parking lot. Remember what the elders said. Second hand, second chance. <laughs> Is that a joke? You are starting to sound like the greedy tribes from the self-serve area. Whoa, mate! You still with us? We've got to get them out of here. I'll grab his legs. Ah! ah! Where am I? Are we in a womb? Are we in a womb? The absolute basket case. I'm afraid you're still on the infinite Ikea, son. What's an infinite Ikea? What's an Ikea? It's a magic place, Ikea is. A benevolent realm of lamps and leather. A wondrous dimension of decor and deck chairs. As far as your wallet can take you. With cushions so soft, it's like drowning in the tits of an angel. Wow. But this one, this one's quite shit. Something's off about this one. Do all Ikeas have those faceless people? I can't tell you, but as I always say, never trust a man without facial features. My name's Elder Freestanding Bathroom Cabinet, by the way, head of this tribe. And if you'd like to stay here, I'm gonna need you to protect your fellow survivor. You think you can handle that? I, uh, sure, yeah. Are you sure? Yes. That was easy. I hereby induct you into the Canopy Tribe. Your clan name is Thorn, on account of that shard of wood stuck in your head. Talk to you later. Supper's in an hour. Ooh. Thorn, huh? Not bad. At least it's not stethoscope. You know, can't imagine having it. That's my name. Oh. But please call me Steth. Or are you found with a stethoscope stuck in your head? <laughs> no, I'm just the closest thing to a doctor in this tribe. So, like a dentist? A nurse? Livestock vet. Right. Well, thanks for dealing with my head splinter. No problem. I'm happy to check up on your wood anytime. Hey! He's awake! Sorry to hear about your memory loss. Eh. I'll forget about it. <laughs> you cheeky fucker. We haven't been formally introduced. I'm Tallboy. This is Hutch. Good morning. This is Hope. How do you do? And over there is Ottoman Davenport Allen Keys. Can you quiet down? I'm trying to scribe over here. And that's Stanley. Don't mind him. He's a bit of a twat. I don't even know why he's called Stanley. Stanley isn't really a furniture name anyway. On a high pedestal, however. Is that your chair? Because you've been sitting on that. <laughs> Fellow Ikeans! I am proud to announce that I have found some Lego. That's what I'm talking about! Talking about. I'm not sure how it got in here. Also, I am proud to draw unneeded attention to the latest edition of our tribe, Thorn, the Impaled. Vengeance! Yeah. Amisa. 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 Ikea. 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 So, Fawn, you must be a pretty rowdy fella to survive getting stabbed in the head, right? I guess so. I've still got no feeling in my left knee. This is gonna sound forward, but can we spar? <gasps> but, but you're so big. I'll go easy on you. Good. It's my first time. Try to disarm me! You were thinking too long! <laughs> Teamwork! Oh my god, this is so cool! Owie. Shit! 
cube only prolonged this inevitable pillow fight. Retreat! That's right, we landed on some pillows. That's our thing. You've done saved me life, Thorn. Did I do that? How did he do it? That's crazy! Day 73. Another sleepless night lurks over this hostile territory, anguished by the presence of a new face. Rations are dwindling, meanwhile the power-mad nobody from the land beyond the parking lot is showing no signs of surrender. I feel crushingly small each day looking into the ocean of praise he receives from these victims. I mourn for these lost souls in this endless hellscape. My mind is in darkness, for I have proven myself invaluable to my tribe. Yet no matter how many times I fight for the ones I love, they can't see that I am the hero. This cannot be my burden. This damn fucking shit motherfucker fucking monster. I was nobody in the land beyond the parking lot. Just please, let me have this. from the suspended immaterial, from hate and from hunger. Little one, your shell will be vacated for the great lord of the void. breath as a slave to the corporeal, my acolyte, my loyal god. God? You assert that a god exhibits neither shame nor despair, and yet I stand unchanged, a tragic husk with bloodied hands. I surrender my future, the prospect of a family, 
to carry your poison. You misled me. I renounce your control. You ungrateful dog. Hear me now, Cretan. If my father was chosen for this most virtuous of tasks, then he would never have died so disgracefully and fascinating. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Forgive me for my defiance. What task have you for your loyal guard? Fidelity has always been your greatest quality, Ragnar. I swear to you, my son, all of your shame and guilt, all of your sins, they will collapse into the abyss we all race towards. Share that truth to the world. Share it with the provinces and the valley and the empires of the West. Show them your conviction. Show them the serenity of the void. Excuse me. Hi, hello. You're Connor, correct? Would you like a pistachio? What the hell? Wakey, wakey, warriors! I'm in the mood for feudal violence and food! Can I get a teamwork? Teamwork! Hello, there? Teamwork! Hello? Teamwork! Teamwork! Teamwork. Hey, come on, Thorn. Trolley's not gonna push itself. Oh, carrying all this food is killing my fingers. I need to sit down. Otto, mate, pass me a ginger snack. That should do the trick. Just don't put too much pressure on it. <sighs> Thanks. You know, that's not the only appendage I can help straighten. Okay, thanks, Steph. Oh, come on. It's just a joke. Don't take it so hard. Ugh. You always have to make it weird. Next, you're going to tell me all those photos I take of you in the shower aren't for medical purposes. You're so paranoid. No wonder you're single. I'm gonna get real with you, Thorn. I have never had tummy tickles this bad before. Tummy what? Maybe it's that mysterious backstory shit I'm really into. Maybe it's that weirdly permanent chin stubble on your delicate baby face. Maybe it's the exceptional lack of intimacy I've suffered trapped for years in this infinite Ikea. Who knows? But I do know, one of these days, I'll wear you down, bitch. And we'll finally be together forever. Like conjoined twins. Uh, but not like blood-related conjoined twins. That's incest. on your mind, son. You've been sulking at that blasted seat for weeks now. We've started calling it the boo-hoo ledge. What's the matter? It's not important. Now, I may be a serious man, but I'm nothing but attuned to my fellow tribesmen. Come on, tell old Papa Freestanding Bathroom Cabinet. I feel... feel like an egg. Like an egg that hasn't hatched, you know? All the others are out and running around and pecking, chirping, living life. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I just can't hatch. I can't hatch. I've been like this for 
it feels like forever, sheltered, locked up, closed off, alone. What if I did open up and everyone just sees a, a gross mess? And what if they hate it? So I just don't hatch? I'm sorry. I told you this wasn't important. I'm sitting here talking about eggs and eggs like some fucking whoa, egg farmer. Whoa, whoa there, Thorn. Calm down. It sounds to me like you have a perpetual need for love and attention. Possibly due to a lifetime being deprived from human intimacy. Kind of crazy how, despite your memory loss, your brain still acts upon your deep-seated emotional damage. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Anyway... This is getting uncomfortable, so I'm going to stand over there. Things couldn't make any less sense. Connor, you shit-lipped whore! Where's the teleporting staple gun? I stand corrected. What is this? It's a drone, Connor, and it was not easy to get approval for. Like those pen-pushing jack-off bureaus couldn't afford it. That voice. It's familiar. And annoying. But my name is not Counter. It's Thorn. Stop fucking around, Connor. Get your disposable ass back to the facility. Connor, do you still have that teleporter? It's very important that you don't lose it. Excuse me. What are you doing in my chair? I live for one darn second and a half, and all of a sudden my vessel is being mutineered by a gang of hooligans. You better not be harassing the kitchenware tribe. They've got enough other plates already. I have no I idea what you're saying. I'm not a disposable counter. I'm not a shit-lipped whore, and I'm not listening to some $50 GoPro drone. I am the Impaled, the Boxborn, the Terror of the Isle de Muerta. I am an Ikean warlord. I was raised in these flat packs. I eat meatballs and drink the free, bloody refills of my enemies. And when I die, I will be taken gracefully into the realm of Akunoit. I am Thorn. No, your name is Connor, and you're a glorified fucking crash test dummy. Hey Connor, while you're in there, could you get a couple of executive office chairs since we're apparently understocked? Go flush yourself. Wow, uh, that's a hate crime. Amnesia. Great. Con, uh, Thorn, does the number 3660 mean anything to you? The little black zipper. Some big scary blokes in lab coats use that zipper to turn you into one of those little round frogs for a week. For an experiment. If I recall correctly, that was really upsetting for you, wasn't it? Look at him. He looks like a little scrotum. Spray him with the acid. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't started suppressing memories sooner. We are not doing this. Okay, my turn. Listen, Thorn. This is very important, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I'm going to have to ask you to kill yourself. Okay, my turn now. Thorn. I've bookmarked a couple of memory-enhancing maths games on epicmathsgames.com. <laughs> Well, as Elder Freestanding always says, heckling drones cometh before the dawn. I shouldn't be expecting any more surprises for the rest of the night. Uh, uh, oh. Huh? Who are- Oh, that guy. Shut up! I'm doing this for the tribe. You're a monster. I won't let you ruin me. I mean, I won't let you ruin this tribe. Stanley? Why are you threatening Thorn with a st- uh, That's not your name, Stanley. I remember everything. God, my life sucks. Ha <laughs> ha
Absolute wanker. We were supposed to be one big family. Why would you do this to your brother? Elder, look there! Thorn is self-assembled again. Just like IKEA legend. Hopefully they don't misinterpret this. Like I always said, holy resurrection cometh before the dawn. That's like yes. I always How said. Do that? Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hush everyone. He wrote us a message in his own blood. Oh, that's fucking right. He wants us to follow his example of bravery and sacrifice. We must take a leap of faith, and we too will become undying. <laughs> Steph, wait, what the ever-loving fuck are you doing? Sorry, Stanley, but you're kind of a dick. Maybe I should have used more blood. What the? <laughs> Bless you, Thorn. You sacrificed yourself just to catch my frail, shriveled constitution. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job. Get up on there. We're getting out of here. Are you taking us to the land beyond the parking lot? You know it, big guy. You're a lot heavier than you look, Hutch. That's because I was born with two skeletons inside my body. That is the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And we get to be pizza, and it's a huge top secret facility. But don't tell anyone I told you. Got it. If I remember correctly, I died in aisle 34,692. God, I missed having a good brain. Is that our escape, Thorn? It sure is. Oh, but my real name's Connor. So why'd they send you into this awful place anyway? Do they hate you or something? <laughs> no, I'm just the closest thing to a field analyst there. <gasps> like an agent? A spy? Uh... Thought you saw the last of me, huh? Well, looks like the pillowcase is on the other pillow! Say goodnight, Canopy Tribe! Die. I can't see what's going on. God, I hope this isn't just a normal staple gun. In my defense, I lost my memory and got like wicked good at throwing spears, but I'm really, really sorry about your it's drone. It's okay, Connor. It's okay. Look over there. We found a chair for Dr. Wilson. Oh! You brought home some friends. Would any of you guys like some pistachios? Jesus oh my Christ. god! Is that a no on the pistachios? Oh, Connor. You know, in a weird way, this is exactly how I pictured our future. Hold that thought. Tall boy, can you press your hand up against my temple? <laughs> sure, Thorn. Anything for you, old buddy, old chum. <laughs> what have I done? John! Oh, yeah. Connor, you'll come back for me, right? This is actually kind of comfortable, like a big flesh snuggie. I I hope I'm not the closest to wherever the anus oh, is. I think I left my stove on back at the canopy. I can't wait to be let back into normal society. Am I allowed to be concerned yet? Oh, come on. They're not dead. It doesn't count. Ugh. You always have to make it weird. Next, you're going to tell me I'm darkness incarnate, one step away from leveling a small neighborhood. You're so paranoid. No wonder you're single. I cannot wait to hear all of your marvelous IKEA adventures. But first, raise your hand if you need to see a therapist. All right, it appears everything is fully operational. So, I'm human again. Correct. This new bit of hardware is really something. We appreciate you volunteering. Transplanting the human soul is quite the sticky endeavor. All right, Ian. It looks like you're good to go. Are you excited to see your family? God. I hope they remember me. I'm sure they will. Psst. Ludwig, come here. 
Ah, Mr. Stavros, the invention is a huge success. Maybe we can even do something about your situation. Kudos, my friend, but this is of special interest. For the past few weeks, this woman from the Ikea dimension has an interesting medical anomaly. She was particularly fond of our favorite test subject. Hmm, insightful. The site manager will be very grateful for this information. Indeed. I'm gonna tell him first. What? That I'm is that is bullshit. First. I am brain doctor, not you. But the whole time I just felt tired and resented the men. Resenting? Resentful? Resentful. I kind of liked being important. So I thought helping them would make me happy, and it did. Until it didn't. It was like that story with the guy and the rock going up the mountain. Uh, Jumanji 2? Oh, Sisyphus. That's the one. Well, sounds to me like you have a perpetual need for love and attention, probably due to a lifetime- Okay, no more psychoanalysis, please. Oh, sorry. But is it really that hard to believe that people would like you even if you weren't useful? You'd be surprised to see how others react when you get to be yourself. I don't want to be myself. Dr. Powers. You've been requesting access to a particular file over the past few weeks. Is that correct? I understand that you've been neglecting your health checks as of late. I think it's in your best interest that you come to my office immediately. I was right. I was right. I knew it. I was right. And everyone else was wrong. I'm still the hero.
so... I call this meeting of the O5 Council to order. It has come to my attention that Site 69, nice, nice, among others, have fallen below the minimum occupancy. To solve this crisis, I propose that we expand the definition of paranormal to include everything on the endangered animal list as of 2015. And those European cars that only have three wheels. <coughs> All in favor? Brilliant. Now let's proceed with... If I may, uh, Senior Chairman Graham, the Ethics Committee have a few concerns. Now, uh, here we go. Oh, do you? <coughs> I'll allow it. <clears throat> We've come to understand that Site-95 has stopped testing with death row inmates altogether in favor of utilizing an immortal human SCP. I thought you were against using inmates. I am. But for the past decade, this SCP, this poor kid, has been burned, beaten, and blown to bits from Site-69 to Site-19. Nice. Yeah, nice. To Site-19. It's all on record. If you don't believe me, believe his therapist. She is one of the brightest... Therapist? Yes, his therapist. The SCP Mental Health Program you co-signed with me four months ago developed a much greater understanding of their... That's uncharacteristically and... thoughtful of me. All in favor of defunding this program and using that money to hire more security. You're a bunch of fucking cop turtles. <laughs>
Attention all staff, have a containment breach in the eastern wing of the facility, but I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. I was there to witness the victim of a sickness, he wants the world to notice that he's no worth the focus. He could make an entrance, but could not make a friend, now he's got lots of different scratches. From trying here and then, and I say, liberate your sons and daughters. So bush is high, but in the hole there's water. You can keep it well and hidden. No one's perfect, but it's a living. Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too high or a little too low. Got loads of steam and vertigo, but he thinks he's fine and dandy. Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too far or a little too close He's pretending, but everybody knows he thinks he's fine and dandy I am not a human atom bomb, I'm not a rapidly evolving virus, I'm not a Shakespearean cannibal. Ring a ring of roses, whoever gets the closest, he comes and he goes as the war of the roses. Mother wouldn't kiss him cause of his condition, now he's stuck in a prison for his strange disposition. Liberate your sons and daughters, the bush is high but in the hole there's water. Do as you will, it's much less work to ignore But if it don't feel good, what are you doing it for? Hey ho, here he goes, either a little too high or a little too low Got low self-esteem and vertigo, but he thinks he's fine and dandy Hey ho, here he goes, either a little too far or a little too close He's pretending, but everybody knows he thinks he's fine and dandy This damn mother Months. Liberate your sons and daughters The bush is high but in the hole there's water Do as you will, it's much less work to ignore But if it don't feel good, what are you doing it for? 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 Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too high or a little too low. Got low self-esteem and vertigo, but he thinks he's fine and dandy. Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too far or a little too close. He's pretending, but everybody knows he thinks he's fine and dandy. Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too high or a little too low. Got low self-esteem and vertigo, but he thinks he's fine and dandy. Hey, ho, here he goes, either a little too far or a little too close. He's pretending, but everybody knows he thinks he's fine and dandy. Absolutely nothing special about you. Why, hello there, madam. How are ya? What's your name? Annie. Annie, it is lovely to meet ya. Tell me, are you sick of salesmen pitching you their usual uninspired household bric-a-brac farming dust on the old windowsill? Yes, I am, actually. Well, you're in luck! So I couldn't help notice that your wonderful abode is planned with a capital B. So leave it to me, most definitely these bases are gonna get erased and replaced with stuff from the wonderful corners of the map with two things scared to tap. How about that? Now you're listening soon, you're living them sparkling out of the park with anomalies! Anomalies? Yes, of highest quality. From mechanical, botanical, satanic and beyond, the spawn that makes you ponder your these anomalies. Yes, anomalies. Affordable in this economy? From the wonderful corners of the map with two things scared to tap. Yeah, yeah, you already said that. What do you mean by anomalies? I'm glad you asked! So I got a little microwave over right here of Humdrum Build and Brand. 
But at my command, you can choose to shoot this cute little rooster into the future. Why not this refrigerator? Pop your pops right in it. But the drawing, please don't pin it, lest you're itching for cleaning your innards in the kitchen. Then you can drill to the yard for the mail, but alas, to no avail. Heed this needy boxer's red flag, for he's obsessed with the opposite sex, but now it's time for a change in scenery. Did I mention? It's a desperate dimension. Bet by theocracy, crash the economy, faceless monsters prosper across this phenomenal price for a lake up north where the town's folks just don't go. Oh no, it's fog with haunted content, and if you're not content to spend the cent, Try leverage for a beverage, keep you energized, close your eyes, but why? Say goodbye to pointless nights investing and rest and save the memories. Just kidding, it's your deepest desires, let's move on to a cowbell. Nothing magic, I just thought it was funny. We all love money but we have no time when the world is coming to an end. Friend, this clock won't bite, it's inside, just might tell if the future will be alright. Before it ends, just be a friend and spend your sense on this godsend. Lend an appendage to the splendid offer you can comprehend. So what do you say? If I buy the microwave, would you leave? No, that's the spirit! Just sign in, in here! Have no fear, don't be alarmed, unless you're harmed from being disarmed! Which you are! I show you, madam, this sturdy grey oven has a 30-day policy guarantee! Like you need it, since you'll bleed down in about 30 seconds I'll wreck it, so before you went to the realm of the dead with an oven and a missing joint. Here's the point, never trust a man in a pitchback suit with a smile that goes on for miles, either he's a creature from the far off reaches of space or a guy trying to prey on the mentally fragile. The first in the right me, Tim with the goes out to the angry and impatient viewer. Alright, let's answer some questions. Writing the script is the most important and the most recurring part of the creation process. I could be halfway through animating before I realize, oh, hey, that'll actually be really good. Then I just write it in. Inspiration comes out of nowhere, you know, usually when I'm walking or trying to sleep. But I try my best to make sure there's consistency and meaning to the events that take place in the story. In the episode I'm currently working on, I've been advised to make sure each line of dialogue has a purpose in the story, even if it's just a joke. Make something you're proud of, enough to keep working on it, no matter how long it takes. This is a little embarrassing, but I use GIMP and Sony Vegas Pro 13. I draw out models, assets, and backgrounds, and I paste them together to make each frame. Sometimes I have to draw frame by frame for special scenes, but most of them are pre-drawn. Then I throw the PNGs into Sony Vegas and time it to the audio. It's really unorthodox and really tedious, but I don't currently feel like dedicating time to learning a new program just yet. As it turns out, the SCP content creators on YouTube are mostly readers, which means they usually have nice voices and microphones. So I thought it'd be nice to get as many as I can. Designating who does what voice is totally up to how I write the character though. And the larger I get, the more people I meet, so more opportunities for voice actors. There are a lot, but they're usually lines of dialogue or bits of animation. I'll show some on screen now.
I think aesthetic taste is something that can only be refined through new experiences. With confinement, for instance, I try to harness the feeling I get when I enter a sad, minimalist building. A simple design with muted colors and non-specific music sets the tone for the time-locked lifestyle of an inmate. But it also helps make big events look bigger and more exciting. Little things like lighting can really help set the mood too, whether it be cold, calm, terrifying, or mysterious. As much as I complain about the impatient fans, I think my followers and subscribers are a lot more tame and considerate than many fan bases I see. Plenty of them acknowledge this crap takes a while and respect that I'm trying to improve and work harder for each episode. For that, I thank you. However, please stop asking me if X is going to happen or going to appear in any future episode. I already have the entire season planned out, so I won't spoil it either way. I'd say finally uploading it. It feels great to be proud of my work, enough to release it to the public at least, reading praise and criticism so I can improve and ultimately become a better artist, and because of that, the episodes I'm most proud of are always the ones that I'm currently working on. Oh, there are a few. I've always wanted to have SCP-1265. I've got big plans, but not big enough for this one. When I was still making Bunk Chronicles, I decided I wanted to work on a mini-animation inspired by many things, but most notably Welcome to Night Vale. I wanted something horror-themed but light-hearted, that teased a greater, scary universe but not in a nihilistic way. And that idea bled into a series with seven fully animated videos and still going. I'm planning on making ten episodes altogether for this season. And if I still feel like it, maybe a second season? I'd say it's always story-driven, in that there is a purpose for the events that take place in relation to our main character. I just use the comedy to prevent the story from getting stupidly dark and needlessly nihilistic. As with Connor's immortality, in episode 1 it is revealed that Connor faces no threat from Ferdinand intentionally, so that Connor's insecurities can be introduced to the audience, his fear of being compared to a monster. In episode 2, the primary risk for Connor is that he would be stuck as a log. It's not that big a deal, but the events that take place highlight the idea of permanence and conflict between being uprooted or being taken care of. In episode 3, Connor has to face the risk of being neurologically piloted by a jealous robot. Seeing as he can't die, you can imagine how nightmarish that would be. The episode establishes Connor's discomfort around other people, the robot being the most extreme example possible. But this experience actually helps Connor open up and make a new friend. Also, this wasn't intentional, but Connor and Natalie asked each other out between episodes 3 and 4 because of that therapy rescheduling. Okay, bye. In episode 4, there is no danger of health and well-being. It's more of an emotional one. In this episode, Connor opens up to Natalie about his abandonment issues because of his mother. Then shortly after, meets an SCP who has the exact same backstory. Thinking that they could be friends, she vanishes in pursuit of closure leaving Connor alone to wonder if he could ever be so lucky. In episode 5, the threat is simply that Connor would be a silver person in some makeshift slum for the rest of his existence. But this measly and pathetic threat is quickly denied by something potentially more dangerous for everyone, including Connor. But I can't say anymore. Good question. Natalie is our assertive window into Connor's world. Otherwise, he'd be even more boring and quiet than he is now. There is a dynamic about the two that challenges Connor's insecurities from episode 1. And based on the last episode, that dynamic might be shifting slightly. As for the ethics committee, you'll just have to wait. I wanted Ferdinand to remind me of many elderly people in my life who talk more than they listen, making him a bit charming but also a bit intimidating. Other than that, Dr. Wilson and Lou the Swordsman are definitely based on a lot of people I know, aside from being a direct visual ripoff of Mr. Stutch from South Park. My art style takes heavy inspiration from shows like Super Science Friends and The Regular Show. I don't know. I just want to give an update on Confinement Episode 6 Part 2 and other Confinement projects. A couple of weeks ago, my dumb fat ass fell down the stairs and shattered my coccyx, which was kind of hilarious but really painful, and now it's very difficult for me to sit down for a long period of time. As you can imagine, this makes animating and editing a bit of a task. It doesn't feel great not working, but it's worse for me to hurt myself like this, so work on Confinement will be a bit limited until I heal. 
I don't know how long it will take, but I will try to make at least some content for YouTube and Twitter. Upcoming projects include Confinement Episode 6 Part 2, The Origin of Connor's Anomaly, and a new Confinement special about SCP-1879. That one has a musical number that I already finished, so I'm pretty excited about that. I don't want you all to think that I'm gone or neglecting the channel. It's just a lot of extra work for me right now with this injury. One more injury like that, and you could wind up like that poor creature there in the iron butt. Oh man, it itches. I'll try and stream again soon, but I might have to be kneeling or standing half the time. Anyway, I hope you're all having a good 2019. Bye. Hey everyone, it's been a minute. Confinement Episode 8 is still in production. I just wanted to let you all know that there have been some changes. I spoke about this with my Patreon a while ago, but I want to tell all of you now. As I found, the longer I worked on Episode 8, the more I realized I had made this project way too large for two people to animate in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, between the pandemic, moving states, organizing my life, money, and dealing with various physical and mental health issues, I have made a few changes. First, Episode 8 has been split into two separate episodes since both plots were pretty self-contained anyway. But this means by the time I finish Episode 8, which will now be sooner, Episode 9 would already have so much of it done. Full on Creature has returned to help with animation from last time, and I'd like to formally introduce my co-writer, editor, and animation helper, Orion. He's been helping for a bit here and there, but now will be helping in a more official capacity to make the process run a bit quicker in the future. Alright, the part you're here for. If you didn't already know, I've been slowly revealing mostly benign spoiler content to my patrons as I've been making them, as a way to thank them for their support. Here are just some of them, don't want to reveal too much. Warning, minor spoilers for episode 8 and 9, skip ahead if you want to go in completely fresh. Finally, I just want to say thank you for having faith in me. I value all of you and the support that you've given me for all these years. I truly do appreciate the patience and the kindness and I do read the kind comments and it's really the only thing that's uh, giving my life a sort of direction because I, I love doing this. I love this job. Even if it has quite a few bumps quite a few unique bumps that I have to deal with. The episode doesn't have a release date, but uh, we'll continue to update on Patreon and Discord. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Stay tuned.